like the sources would be uh, the combustion, uh, the gear mess, um, transmission error, camshaft, traction vibrations, dynamic imbalance, and then um, exhaust. The paths would be the powertrain mounts, the drive lines, and then the hangers, and then suspension. The response would be the noise in your uh, driver or passenger, the exhaust boom, or the driving uh, steering wheel vibration. So the powertrain noise and uh, vibration frequencies would be of a different uh, range. Uh, typically, we look till uh, 1000 hertz. But uh, what are the different kind of um, frequency range what we could be able to have? Uh, what you have in the orange or the, the red color is the, um, the structure bond where it, you could be able to feel as a vibration only. And then the, uh, the, the green one is you could be able to feel as a noise. In between, you could able to booming. You could able to see. Um, uh, you could able to feel as well as uh, feel in the uh, powertrain uh, excitations, usually powertrain excitations. So this is the uh, major source what we are looking into. The booming noise it is around uh, 20 to 300 hertz. The mid frequency level it's around uh, 250 to 1000 hertz. The high frequency is from uh, 400. It could go till 10 kilohertz. So uh, the powertrain um, noises or the frequencies would be always in this uh, these uh, bands or this range only. So the uh, before going into the powertrain NVH, I would like to uh, explain about the order. Um, we are usually uh, take order as our uh, base um, uh, basics. Why? Because the order is the only thing which we could be able to tell. Like this is the engine order which we have to uh, uh, find, or this is a gear excitation order which we need to have. So uh, the order is the number of uh, sound or the vibration which is uh, existing uh, per cycle. Whatever I told you, I assume that there is uh, only one excitation is going to happen per cycle, but it could be a multiple sources also. So that. That is what the order is explaining here. The sound and vibration are commonly measured in terms of uh, cycles per second. That is the frequency. Um, but with respect to what? That is what the question is. So we always measure with respect to crankshaft rotation. So uh, for example, uh, take uh, a tire, right? If it is having imbalance at only one place, uh, uh, it is going to hit a bell, right? Uh, consider it is going to hit a bell. So once you rotate the uh, the tire or the rotating component, this imbalance is going to rotate and hit the bell uh, at only one uh, time per revolution. That means per RPM, uh, per, per, per uh, revolution. So that means it is going to hit the bell for the uh, only one time for the given uh, revolution or the given uh, one resolution, revolution. Consider it has two, like this oval shape, right? For the given revolution, uh, if it is rotating one time, the, it would hit the bell two times, right? So that, that means it is the second order vibration. That means you are having two kinds of excitations for the given uh, rotation of your uh, tire or the rotating component. Uh, take this uh, as um, uh, a triangle kind of thing, right? So where this uh, the edges is going to hit your bell. So this um, would hit the bell uh, three times for the given rotation. That means it is the third order vibration which is you are having. So the frequency of uh, hitting would be increasing with respect to order. So the frequency, if, if it is one hertz here, means the frequency at which it is hitting the bell would be two. That means two uh, hertz. Here it is going to hit the uh, bell three times. So that means it is three hertz or the third order. So that is what it is uh, uh, explaining you. So based on that, uh, based on our um, the engine, right? We could be able to tell what are the orders which our engine could be able to have. Like I3 means inline three, it will have a 1.5 order. Uh, for I4, that means inline four cylinder engine will have a second order. And then I5 um, would be 2.5. Uh, for V6, it would be uh, three, goes on. So this would explain us uh, what kind of order or what kind of frequency we have to look into it. Uh, and then uh, later on, we could be able to order, uh, uh, focus on particular order or particular frequency, so that we could able to make it, uh, uh, we could able to rectify the uh, the sources, and then we could able to reduce the vibration.
So uh, the pottery and NVH analysis process consists of a lot of things. Um, let me go uh, take you through that. So we usually prepare uh, the FEA model. And what you're seeing here is a uh, pottery and NVH model. And we do the model analysis to see whether the uh, we are having um, the correct frequencies or not, or if all the components have been uh, intact or any uh, unusual things are happening. Then we predict the uh, the loads or the generalize the loads uh, based on what kind of uh, simulation we are going to do. Then uh, we uh, uh, we uh, put those loads in the FEA model and then do the analysis. So the result would be like this: the responses and then the uh, vibration pattern. Then we do the uh, airborne analysis. Whether you need to have a airborne analysis, uh, then we'll be going for the acoustic analysis. Uh, and then we compare it with the target. Uh, so if it is above the target, you have to go back to your uh, FEA model or you have to go back to your uh, loads to fine tune the loads or the fine tune your model. Then uh, again, this process goes. So if you don't have, uh, if you don't want to have airborne analysis, you are okay with the vibration analysis, you just go and compare it with the target and then uh, see. If the target is not met, we again go back to the, uh, FEA model are the loads and then fine tune those two and then again do the analysis. Uh, this process goes on until we meet the target. So this is how we do the analysis uh, in case of uh, power train or NVH. So uh, there are a lot of NVH power train simulation cases are there. Um, uh, to name a few, I just uh, put it and then the what kind of software we are being using it and what is the outcome which we are uh, expecting out of it. So if you see the power train FE model build on an assembly, we build the engine or transmission or driveline FE uh, finite element anal analysis and then uh, and then its assembly. We use we typically use hypermesh ANSA and ANSYS. Um, then the powertrain model analysis where you find the natural frequencies of your uh, powertrain uh, model, uh, like the outcome would be powertrain bending or the structure bond vibration where we use the Nastron OptiStack and then the answers. And we use the uh, transfer function analysis as well, like vibration transfer function or the noise transfer function where we just see the sensitivity of uh, airborne, structure bond and noise prediction use the uh, cis noise OptiStrack, uh, those kind of softwares. Um, and the mount vibration, uh, we use OptiStrack and cis noise. Then the special um, cases come, like the transition wine or the rattle analysis. We use um, Romax, Ma Master, SimCenter, or AMSIM, those kind of specific softwares to go and attack uh, the particular uh, noise which we wanted to have. Typically, a, a power train bending would be like uh, looking like this. And then the, the uh, uh, airborne analysis would be looking like this. So um, the simple uh, analysis or the response uh, model or the, the deck what we use to uh, prepare is would be looking like this, where you have a model uh, analysis case and then the, um, the response uh, analysis case, where we could be able to have uh, uh, the boundary as well as the method what we are going to use and then the, the solution sequence, what is the boundary condition which we are using, what kind of method we are using, what is the input load we are using and then output, what kind of output we are going to give and what kind of damping we are going to give to the system. So this typically looks like what we have in, in the um, uh, for the analysis and that is how we uh, run or uh, they simulate the powertrain uh, NVH uh, simulations. So, uh, so this till now, what I've uh, talked about is about the powertrain NVH and then various um, terminologies and then how to uh, attack a uh, powertrain NVH problem if at all you have one or what is the procedure to uh, do the powertrain NVH simulation. So now I'm going to uh, give a, a case study uh, what we're having here. Uh, I don't want to take the power trend since it is complicated as of now, but I would uh, give you a case study uh, uh, using the transformers, what we could be able to have in the uh, in our day-to-day -day activities. Like transformers, you know, right? If you go near to the transformer, you could be able to see, or uh, it, it, you could be able to see the vibration or feel the vibration or the noise. Uh, so this has a simple uh, example where uh, what kind of uh, noises you could have how well we could able to attack. So if you see that uh, the source is the your uh, 
your uh, transformer and the path is the 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 uh, transformer poles or the uh, whatever it is is in between you and transformer and the receiver is you uh, we go ahead with this uh, proposal uh, and the sources would be mostly the uh, the acoustic noise generation is due to the magnostrictive forces or the deformation of uh, uh, the core under the influence of uh, electromagnetic forces so because of that there are two different physical phenomena one is the core laminations strike each other uh, due to the, the the gaps between those uh, that means imperf imperfection of uh, your um, core laminations another one is the vibration in the core due to your uh, magnus magneto magneto forces so these two are uh, major things and when you go into the uh, the actual problem uh, the problem is uh, alternative uh, the source going to be the alternative electromagnetic field and then it could be due to electromagnetic forces as well as electromagnetic uh, mechanical forces like uh, what is interacting between the electrical and mechanical domain and then the uh, the electromagnetic forces uh, the electromagnetic forces using the uh, due to vibration due to the magnetic stricting but electromechanical forces due to the transverse relative motion of core laminations and then the vibration of the winding coils it could be of a structure bond like uh, what you are uh, uh, feeling uh, when you have uh, when you near to the uh, transformer or the air bond like what kind of noise you are hearing so because of that you could able to uh, hear the noises so what you could be able to do um, this is a kind of a, a frequency spectrum uh, under different loads um uh, if you see with a lower load the amplitude of pressure level or the noise it is less but when you have a higher loads it is uh, vibrating more so it is radiating more noise it's more than 70 db which you can able to uh, bear it and uh, what you could be able to do you could able to isolate the entire transformer using this kind of uh, using this kind of laminations or the you could able to uh, build a box around it but it could able to uh, uh, you need to have another uh studies whether it, if is it possible or is it, is it uh it will not affect the uh, core function of a transformer to those kind of studies we need to make and you could what you could able to go you could able to go for the active noise control uh, like you could uh, this is where you are there and uh, the transformer is radiating the noise from here to here just a minute so from here to here what you could do you could able to uh, uh put a mic to estimate the noise and then the uh, take out the mic and then give to active system where the active system generates the um, the act, uh, anti noise it's like the if it is a sine wave it, it it produces cosine wave so what you hear is the uh, the um, combination of these two so you will not hear anything so this is how the active noise control so this is one of the method how you could able to attack the um, the the transformer noise or where what you could do you could able to um, you could able to build a, a, a isolation case like this and then the you could able to reduce the noise so this is how you have to attack if you have a, a, a noise radiating from a surface or noise radiating from a source so hope this helps you to understand about a, a noise and vibration and then how well you could able to attack a problem if at all you have a noise or the vibration uh, and uh, i hope it 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 helped you a lot to understand about what we uh, what is about the uh, powertrain uh, nvh and then the uh, noise and vibration characters of powertrains so the opportunities is it's right wherever you go you will be um, uh, you will be having lot of opportunities that is what i believe because um, the noise and vibration is inherent of uh, whatever you uh, inherent of any uh, objectives any object you have like uh, what you have in your phone is having a, a, a motor inside it to see have the vibration the 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 mobile companies might have fine tune your uh, mobiles for the particular frequency so that you will not have the resonances and then the uh, the if you go into the uh, the household appliances right like the mixer grinder or the uh your grinder wet grinder or your ac everything you need to have a the a noise and vibration characteristics uh, in check so that the customer will not have a kind of uh, uh he will not uh, 
uh, have anything bad about the noise and vibration. It has to be uh, keep checked so that he he could able to um, do his work uh, without any issues of noise and vibration. So the noise and if you have the noise and vibration basics or the knowledge, you could able to get an opportunity any from any domain uh, where there is a, some noise and vibration characteristics associated with. So that concludes my presentation. And uh, what we have learned today is NVH and its terminologies, the the, the lot of power and sources and paths, and what could be what we should do if at all you are doing a, a NVH analysis.